Uh, I'm going to show you how to set up uh, to actually do picks to picks. Um, so this is not next turn prediction using picks to picks. This is just the traditional picks to picks, which is uh, basically you pair two images together. It learns how to convert those pairs, and then you can start to do fun stuff like um, in this case, uh, you could color code random things, and you might get weird car-like shapes uh, in places. Um, this is how you might do edges to cats, other things like this. Uh, so the first thing we have to do is we have to install this stuff. Um, so there's one little hiccup here, which is that um, I'm going to show you what it looks like in paper space. So if you're a part of my artificial images classes, um, when you install this, you will see uh, inside of your already installed tools, there's already a file named pix to pix hd That's because this is using an experimental branch uh, that has been forked from a different uh, developer. This is to do next stream prediction. So what we actually have to do is install this in a separate location. Because if we just try to clone this repo in here, it's just going to overwrite it, and then we'll probably break it. Um, so there's, this is this, the hackiest way to do this is just like, I would make a new directory. So I'm just going to type in make dir, and I'm just going to be pix to pix. Um, so when I make this, uh, you'll see I now have a new directory in here that's just called pix to pix. I'm going to move into that library, um, or sorry, into that folder. And then here is where I'm going to install um, this uh, pix to pix HD. So we're going to use pix to pix HD. You could also, there's another um, folder in here called uh, PyTorch Cyclegan and pix to pix You could use this. This is going to get us a little bit of a better resolution. Um, I think there's sort of a resolution limit on, on this version of pix to pix around 512, and this will get us a little bit more. Um, and it'll still work fine on the 16 uh, gigabyte uh, P5000 that we have from class. So I'm just going to go ahead and install this. Uh, it doesn't take long. Um, then you're going to need to go to uh, move into that folder, which is just pix to pix HD. Um, and now I'm inside of here, and you'll see uh, inside of here we have a couple different um, folders. We've got data sets, images, models. Um, the thing that we mostly want to look at right now is we want to look at data sets. So uh, I've already pre produced a data set for this, um, full, for this uh, demo. Um, obviously, I have other videos on how you can do that, so uh, feel free to jump around and check out those. I'll try to link to some in the uh, description of this video. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and show you what I produced. So this is, I've, you know, you've, you've seen these images from me before. These are just 1024 by 1024 square images um, of these like cool little paint patterns. Um, I went in and made uh, canny edges for all of these. Um, I have a video on this, uh, which I will also link to if you want to go ahead and produce it. What's important to notice is that for pix to pix HD, you want two different folders um, of these different types of images. So here's square 1024, uh, and here's canny. Um, if you use that other library, which is that, uh, what was it? It was um, PyTorch Cyclegan and pix to pix um, I believe the pix to pix images need to be combined into one image. Um, so it actually would be 1024 by 2048. You would merge the two together. Uh, for this library, they need to be separate. Um, so what you need to do is you actually need to upload these up to Paperspace. So I'm going to go ahead and do that really quickly. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to look at my Paperspace folder here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and refresh this, and you'll see now pix to pix is in here, and inside of here is this pix to pix HD. Um, where you want to upload these is you want to upload these to data sets. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. I'm going to make a new folder in here and call it just W. Um, and then inside of here, what you actually want to do is you want to produce, you want to name these folders. The naming is very particular. You have to name it this way, otherwise it won't work. Um, so basically what you want to learn, think, figure out is we want to learn what am I training from to. Um, so in this case, what I'm going to eventually want to produce are just like some squiggly lines, and that's going to produce a new image. So this should be my A folder. So I'm going to go from this to this. Um, so I'm going to name this train underscore capital A, and I'm going to name this folder train underscore capital B, um, and I'm going to go ahead and upload these. Now, two things I also want to mention about making your data set. Uh, the first thing is that these names have to match exactly. Um, if they don't match, you're going to get a bunch of errors. So make sure that the images that you're using, um, the naming convention you have matches. So this is uh, some squiggly crazy name, um, but it's this, right? So if I go back into train A and I look and see, here's the exact same name. And if I open it, they're the exact same image. If you use my data sets tool and you use that numbered function, uh, you might end up with different images uh, at different numbers. So make sure they match up. That's really, really important because if you do that, it won't train correctly. Um, let me just see how long this is taking to upload. Okay, so about three more minutes. Um, basically, like what what the model does then is it matches up the names and it learns from this to this and vice versa. So it's like 
or sorry, not vice versa, actually, just from A to B. Um, so it's really important that these names match up. Um, you'll see here that I've got some interesting things where, like, it didn't pick up a lot of edges. Uh, so it might be kind of funky to see how this actually learns, right? This image is pretty blurry. I can see that's why it didn't pick up any edges. Um, but we're going to sort of learn and, and see what happens here. So uh, as you do this, you know, there's some interesting stuff here. So I might learn to start drawing, like, some ovals and then some other squiggly shapes, that sort of thing, and we'll see what it generates. Okay, so now that these are uploading, um, let's go back to... Uh, the paper space server and let's start building up our command. Basically, we know we're going to need to start training this um, And you're going to once these are uploaded, we're just going to start running it. So If you look at the uh, pix to pix hd repo, um, you'll scroll down here uh, And we're going to look at the section that says Training with your own data set So uh, this is pretty confusing and it actually took me a couple times to read through this to understand exactly what it's saying uh, the first thing here is that um, this is generally set up to do this sort of segmentation to image uh, data. This is just something that NVIDIA is sort of like focused on. Um, they really are they're thinking a lot about how to get uh, different like segmentation maps into images. Uh, because we're using edges, we don't really have segments. So one of the things we have to think about is, uh, you'll see here, um, please generate label maps, which are one channel uh, whose pixel values correspond to the object labels. Um, we don't have labels, which are basically segments. So we actually don't want this. So we're going to do this thing that says label underscore nc0. Um, so I'm just going to start building this command here. Um, and we're just going to start playing with like what we need to do. Um, so let me just grab this corner here, pull it up a little bit. Um, so we're going to start typing python uh, train.py. And the first thing I'm just going to start, like, as you know, like all these arguments, the, out, the order doesn't matter. So, it's, so you can just start building it with whatever you see here. So, okay, so I want label nc0. So I'm going to paste this in here first. And I put in my dash dash already, so I need to remove that. Um, <clears throat> so if your inputs don't have label maps, please specify this. The folder should be named train A and train B. So I just did that. Um, that's exactly what we want. If you don't have instant maps or don't want to use them, please specify no instance. So I don't have instant maps either. So I'm going to use this and paste that in as well. Um, default settings for pre-processing is scale width. I think we're going to be fine here because uh, 16 gigabytes is going to be plenty of GPU space to actually run on this. Um, <clears throat> so next thing we need to look at are uh, what are the flags for options and train options and test options. So I will admit they did not do a great job of actually spelling out how you train uh, using this uh, repository and using this readme. So we're going to have to dig in a little bit into the training options and the base options with inside of these files. Um, let's just do it. I'll show you how I do it. Um, basically, I already did this, so I kind of know what we're looking for. Um, but I, And I also sort of have done this enough that I sort of know what we're looking for. But let me show you how I would go about doing this. So the first thing is, you know they have an options folder. Um, you're going to come in here and base options. So base options are basically options that run during both testing and training. So let's go in and look and see what we have here. <clears throat> so we're going to need to give it a name. So uh, this is definitely be useful. Um, I'm going to name it W, which is the same as my data set. Uh, GPUs, IDs, um, checkpoints directory. So that's going to go to a folder named checkpoints. Sorry, GPUs, IDs is just like how many GPUs do you have? We only have one. Um, checkpoints directory, this seems fine. This is just going to stick all of my checkpoints in a new folder that already exists. Um, we're using the pix to pix model. Um, we don't need to worry about any of these things. Batch size, load size, fine size. Uh, you don't need to worry about this. I might talk about this um, in a later video. Um, this is for sort of tweaking your model in case there's other things you want to do. Um, data root. Data root is the number one thing that we need to do. Uh, you'll see that it already points to data sets slash cityscapes. We need to change that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to paste that in, and then we're going to come back to um, <clears throat> paper space. And inside of data sets, uh, you'll see there was cityscapes. So we want this one. So I'm actually just going to so I can just uh, hit Command C to paste or to copy that path. And I'm just going to paste it in. Um, you'll see that what they did is they did a relative location. Um, they just put a dot there. It doesn't matter. I generally just use the uh, absolute location just because it requires less typing. But if you want to type out that, you can as well. Um, OK, so now we've got the data sets in here. Um, so there's some other options in here you could play with. Uh, you could play with flipping this. So if you if this is like, um, I don't know, if this is text that you want to re <clears throat> read left to right, you might not want to flip this. This is going to flip uh, images, I believe, left to right. 
Um, let's see what else is here. There's a bunch of options for uh, changing your, your sort of filtering and that sort of thing. We actually don't need to worry about any of this. Um, we've already set these no instance um, settings. So I think we're good within base options. So let's come back to the test option, or sorry, train options since we are training. Uh, let's look at what we have here. Display frequency, print frequency, save epoch frequency. So we might actually want to change this one. Uh, this is going to save every 10 epochs. Um, that's pretty high. If your machine shuts off, um, you might lose, uh, you might actually lose some work. I might reset that. So let's actually, let's do this. Let's reset this. So let's change this to five. So I'm gonna set this to five. Um, and then no HTML. This is fine. This is gonna save out some samples for us. That's helpful. Um, continue train. So this is if you wanna, like, after, if after training you find it needs more, um, you can set this and change that. Um, I would not touch any of these other options. These are more like sort of fine tuning options. Um, I might do a video on some of what each of these mean if you're really interested, uh, but I think we're good to just set this up. So at this point, I think we're pretty good. We've given it a name, we've given it a data root, we've changed the save frequency, we've set some labels. So let's actually just run this and see what happens. So if I hit return, okay, so it started, it's loaded a bunch of images. This is now uh, basically building up what the network looks like. Um, here are all the settings, so I could also go through here and make sure all my settings are right if I wanted to. I'm just going to sort of see what happens when this actually runs. And actually, I know I'm going to get an error with this because <laughs> uh, I just did this on a different folder and I know what's going to happen here. Um, so as it, I'll tell you now, as it turns out, um, when I cropped a couple of these images, a couple of these came through at the wrong size. So uh, I know what's, I know I'm going to get an error here because there's like three or four images that came in at the wrong size. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to stop the video. I'm going to fix that. Um, basically, all I have to do is upload the correct uh, data set, which I already have on another server. Um, and then we'll come back and look at this. And this hasn't thrown an error yet, um, but I'm like 95% sure it will. So let's just wait and see. Um, but I'm like very certain it probably will. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and stop the video and come back uh, once this is set up. I'll show you what the error looks like if you see it. All right, so I'm back. Uh, as expected, I got an error message. Um, this is actually helpful. I should probably do more of this. like purposefully screwing up, because uh, I definitely did this on purpose and it definitely wasn't a mistake. Um, basically, if you see an error message that often says something like size of tensors must match, um, then what that usually means is that usually means you've got some images that are different sizes. Um, so you'll see here that uh, this has got 1472 and 1460. Um, it was probably looking for something that was actually 1024 by 1024 and it didn't find it. Now I think what's also helpful to know is that you'll see that it actually ran for a little bit first. Um, and what that means is like as we go through iterations, it's going through each image. Uh, that's what iterations means. It's going through each image in your folder. Um, and it went through like 300 some images before it actually found one that did not meet the sizes that it was expecting. So uh, this is really helpful. It's helpful to sort of learn what these errors mean. That's what this one means. Um, what I went ahead and did is I updated my uh, folder. So it doesn't look any different except there's like two or three less images in here. <clears throat> one, a couple of these just had the wrong size or wrong scale, um, and I end up fixing that. So now we'll just um, come back here, we'll press up again, and then we're going to run this again. And this time it should completely work. And I'm just going to wait a little bit until I see uh, basically this first batch of things pass through. So when it starts, when it does the first epoch, that's when I'll know that I'm ready to sort of go. Um, this is usually my technique for training on paper space. Um, once I know that it doesn't throw any errors immediately, I'm going to stop the machine and I'm going to run it again with NoHub. Um, and that's just going to, again, for people who are in paper space, uh, NoHub means that when you shut down your connection to paper space, you don't uh, quit the job. So um, it's pretty important to remember to do that. Um, I'm just going to wait a minute and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Um, <clears throat> so it's important to know when you're on paper space that uh, when you like close out your terminal, if you don't use nohub, that will uh, stop your command. Um, that's different than saying if you close this terminal window, you actually turn off your paper space machine. Um, again, your paper space machine is running um, until you go back into paper space and turn it off. Um, meanwhile, like the actual job, this like script process is only running uh, as long as you have your terminal window, unless you use NoHub. 
Um, this is probably just going to take another couple seconds. Um, why don't I go ahead? I'm going to show you. So I've already started. Uh, I've sort of like pre-prepped some of this on a different server. So why don't I go ahead and show you what you're going to start to see when you actually go here. Um, so if you're in this, uh, this is a, just a different server. Um, so when you open your checkpoints folder, you will see that there is now a file called w, or something like this. When you open that, um, you'll see in here that this one was set to every 10. It's going to generate these files. Um, I set it to 5 in my other one, but uh, it just happens. So what the important thing for you to sort of keep an eye on is you've got this index folder. Um, you could go into the paper space desktop view and just open this in Firefox and sort of see what it does. I generally just look at the folders inside of the images. Inside of images, you'll see there are usually uh, four different labels, or three, sorry, three different files per epoch. Um, remember, epoch is how many times it goes through all of the iterations in a file. So like in, in this example, this data set has, um, let me see how many images it has. It has 831 images in it. So that means um, in every iteration is one image. So when it goes through all 800, that's an epoch. Um, so when you come back to this, you'll see that this is um, inside of checkpoints and inside W. You'll see that um, this is now loaded up to its 14th epoch, uh, which means it's gone through all the images 14 times. Um, at every 10 epochs in this particular example, it's going to output. Um, it's actually just going to save out the training generator. Now it's also going to save out the latest, and the latest is what you're going to actually like convert from. But let's say you really like, for whatever reason, you really like Epoch 50, um, you'll get that generator. If you really like Epoch 49, um, you will not get that generator file. So with picks to picks I generally just let it train for the entire time. The entire time, uh, by default, is 200 epochs. Um, that might actually be too short for this particular model, but we'll sort of see. Um, I'll do a video at the end, just, uh, sort of probably tomorrow or the day after, once this is finished training, to sort of show you what uh, it looks like to train and then how you can actually test it. Um, but if you just look at these files inside of here, this is sort of like fakes within StyleGAN. This just sort of shows you what it looks like. So first off, you open up Epoch 13. Um, this is the input label. So this is the canny edge that it got. So this is the canny edge. Here's what it was supposed to look like, which is this. Um, and here's what the pix to pix machine model generated so far. So you'll see the colors are off, um, but it's got some good structure here. Uh, it's not bad structurally. Um, you know, you'll see that there's a lot of these like little gappy spaces. That's usually like in early training. That's generally what you'll see. Um, and also, like you should probably look and see what your edges actually are. So the actual edges, there's some stuff missing here. So I wouldn't expect it to sort of know these structures. Probably because it's a little blurry there. Um, but it's getting pretty good actually. Like I would say, like this is pretty good for Epoch 13. Um, again, it's going to train to 200, and at that point, it's going to be like pretty good overall. Um, but it's helpful to just sort of know that you've got these sort of uh, capabilities here. So this is how you sort of check. So if we were to go look at Epoch 1, or I guess Epoch 2, maybe just as an output one, adding anything at 1. This was the edge it was looking for. Um, this is what the realistic image was supposed to look like. Um, and here's what it synthesized. So like clearly very early epochs are going to look bad, although I guess you could say this is a cool looking image, but maybe not good for what it's supposed to be doing um, compared to this. So as it trains further and further and further, you're going to get better images. Um, and at some point, you might be like, this is far enough, or maybe I want to train it for a little bit longer. Um, how long has this been training for? This has been training for like four hours. So if I take this and sort of multiply it, this got to 15, right? So 200 divided by 15, so 13. So this is going to take, uh, let's see, so let's just say 14 times 4 divided by 24. Um, so this training is going to take about two and a half days. Um, so just be aware that like the bigger your images are, the longer it's going to take to train. Um, this is just an option here. Um, you could train this. There are some ways to train this faster, but I would generally say like this is probably about right. Um, this is still shorter than StyleGAN is going to take. StyleGAN is going to take four or five days, I would recommend. Um, so this is pretty good. Uh, this is everything you need to know just to do like a basic training within pix to pix HD. Um, if you have other questions, you can hit me up on Slack or you can uh, drop some comments in the YouTube channel. Um, thanks. Um, I wanted to show you how to actually uh, do run NoHop on Paperspace. Uh, so obviously, like, let's go back to Paperspace. So you'll see now it's run for a couple iterations. Um, I'm just going to hit Control C. That's going to stop the process. I'm going to hit Up. Um, that just gets me back to where I was started from. Um, and then you're just going to hit Control A. 
Uh, that's going to take you to the very beginning of the page, and you're going to hit no hub um, and space, and then that command. Um, this is just going to run uh, this script, but in no heads up, which is going to let you uh, close out this terminal. Um, so you just hit return. Um, you'll see it's starting to ignore input and output. Uh, basically, you won't see anything here, but know that the first time you ran it, it ran pretty well, um, or it didn't have any errors, so you should be fine. Um, and then once you've done that, you can now hit uh, this and just terminate this process. Now, of course, remember that um, it is still running in paper space. This is still on, it's still running. If you were to shut this down, you would actually uh, quit that command. So make sure you don't shut this down while it's running. Um, pretty important. Okay, totally forgot to mention that, but that's what I want to show. Um, okay, now time to say goodbye. Thanks again.